I'm Gene Coletta, editor of the Latin America Advisor at the Inter-American Dialogue in Washington. Ecuador's presidential election is headed to a runoff on April 11th. In the first round on Sunday, leftist economist Andres Arauz emerged as the top vote getter. However, it is still unclear who his challenger will be in the runoff as the race for second place remains too close to call between conservative banker Guillermo Lasso and indigenous environmental activist Yacu Perez. With us today to discuss the election is Natalie Selly. She has previously served as Ecuador's Minister of Production and the country's ambassador to the United States under former President Rafael Correa, and she joins us from Puerto Viejo, Ecuador. Uh, Natalie, thank you so much for being with us today. Hi, Gene. I hope you're doing okay in Washington. Not too cold. Likewise. No, hopefully it'll warm up soon here, too. <laughs> Um, well, Natalie, uh, first of all, as we've been covering the election, uh, sort of the big surprise from the first round uh, seems to be how well Yacu Perez did, as polls had him far below both Arauz and Lasso. Um, what do you think is driving support for the indigenous leader? Well, I think uh, Jaco did a really good campaign. I think also in the national debate where Correa's candidate and this Arauz didn't show up, I think he took the opportunity to talk uh, frontly against what he thought the Korea candidate wasn't doing, wasn't doing, and and, and, and frankly, make it a good case against uh, some of the policies that uh, Andres Arauz was uh, was uh, pronouncing to the Ecuadorian people. I, I will say, you know, from from those debates, Jaco was one of the clear winners. The other one is being uh, the candidate from Izquierda Democrática, which also performed really well on the on the elections and. It was kind of a surprise in the, the, the candidate Erbas, who also did, as I say, well, re, did really well on the on the on the on the elections. And I think you know, being being uh, both of them uh, hard uh, critics of the Lenin administration, and there's a perception of the people that Lasso and also Nebot, you know, are both from the right, parties being of course. Last and more conservative than than Nevot being, you know, like supporting the needs the needs policies. I think that give cl a clear space for Yaku to be the holder of uh, uh, challenging those results from the Lenin administration, and also um, convoking to the Ecuadorians to a new deal and a new deal that uh, that also, you know, um, there's a there, there's a uh, a current among especially the young people of Ecuador, the young, the young generations to really preserve our environment and our diversity as a country. All right, terrific. And, and the issues that um, Ecuadorians care about right now, what do you see as the main issues that are really driving the election um, uh, and are chain, you know, are, are uh, driving support for the candidate? Uh, jobs, jobs and jobs. And also, you know, the health concerns about who is the president when it run, uh, the vaccines roll out well. I mean, are, are we going to have the vaccines soon enough so we can uh, trust in our recovery of our economy or we will have to see and wait ab about about this. So I would say jobs, 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 the economy, the economy, but also the, 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 the trust on a, on a guy that can really bring e e union in the country and run the health crisis in a, in, a man, in a manner that is way better than it has been done with from the government administration. And, and when we talk about jobs and the economy and the government's ability to fight COVID-19, those sorts of issues, mm -hmm. uh, do any of the messages from any of the candidates seem to be resonating more with voters? Do you think Arauz uh, seems to have that more um, and that's why he's yeah. gotten the support that he has or, or, or who seems to be really connecting on those issues? Well, I think Arauz has done really well about, you know, criticizing the government and then offering to have a 90 days, you know, vaccine support from the Argentinian president, which really went back, fire back the days before the election when he received a letter from the president of Argentina saying that he was not com committed to provide those vaccines, but rather that, you know, put a good word about Ecuador and getting those vaccines. But yes, I think uh, Arauz has been more resonated on that issue of the health crisis and, you know, putting out front, you know, the trade-off about the negotiation, renegotiation of the debt. He's been very, very harsh on that issue. 
and uh, blaming the government of Lenin Moreno of not attending the, the, not putting the health of their citizens first from the economic issues that he had to, to deal with. Right, now it's no secret that Arauz is the protege of former president Rafael Correa um, and uh, sort of his hand-picked uh, candidate for, for the election. Uh, to what extent do you think support for Arauz in this election is really support for Correa? How much is this really a referendum on Correa? Totally, it's totally about Correa. I mean, what I, you know, I can tell you, you know, is mostly this election was framed between Correa and anti-Correa. And which is make me hopeful today is that two new currents emerge, you know, like the Erebus, which has a 16% of votes. I mean, it's, it's a lot yeah, from somebody that was unknown on politics before this is a, is a businessman. And then you have Jaco with close to 20%. I mean, so it's not everything about Correa and, and anti-Correa in, in my country, which make me hopeful that we will get over that and then will new uh, political leaders will emerge and with a new positive message that will align more people, um, you know, it, 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 rather than to have these hateful feelings from one side to another side and division in the country. So um, it seems like Ecuadorians are ready for a non-divisive uh, uh, speech. Ecuadorians are ready for to listen to a new proposals, a new way of doing politics. And, uh, and that makes me, as I say, hopeful. Sure. Now, we've talked about some of the domestic issues, particularly jobs, the economy, certainly the country's struggle with the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. If we could maybe think about uh, international issues or talk about international issues a little bit more, too. Um, what is at stake in terms of Ecuador's relationships with other countries, such as the United States and China? Um, what, uh, you know, what's riding on this election for those sorts of relationships and how could those relationships change depending on who's ultimately elected? Well, really, you know, Lenin Moreno has been doing a good job in getting close to the United States and getting a more multi, multilateral relationships, a more diversified way of doing uh, business and, 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 and getting in touch with global, global issues, which I think it has been good for Ecuador. I mean, I think the national interest should come always first and uh, having multilateral diversified relationship, I think it's the right way to go. Uh, so regarding the candidates, I would say, you know, if, if uh, Lasso turn out to be uh, the, the, the one oppo opposing um, Correa's candidate in the next round, uh, I, I think Lasso will be more prone to have a more in-depth relationship with the United States. But if Jaco wins, I don't think it will be, you know, a catastrophe for those relationships to tell you the truth. It's more rhetoric than, you know, pragmatism. And I think he's a very pragmatic person, um, you know, coming to the point to negotiate with the IMF and coming to the point to, to find an agreement. He, there's not enough room or space a gene to really change dramatically what we have nowadays in international relationships and also in dealing with the multilateral, uh, because Ecuador still have a seven, eight percent of deficit, less than expected, which is good. You know, taking in consideration the the downturn that we have of eight nine percent of GDP, but also the need to finance it, despite the renegotiation of the bonds that we have last year. Is still in 8,000 um, millions of dollars or $8 billion, which for a small country like Ecuador is a large amount to, to be forced to finance every, every year. All right, terrific. Uh, lots of issues will be uh, coming to you uh, more in the future. Uh, I promise to, uh, to dig in more of these issues, but uh, I'm afraid that's all the uh, time we have today. Thank you so much, uh, Nathalie Selig, for joining us. To you, Gina. Thank you. Thank you very much for your interview. Absolutely. Nathalie Selly, former Ecuadorian production minister and ambassador to the United States, uh, joining us from Puerto Viejo, Ecuador. And I'm Gene Coletta, editor of the Latin America Advisor at the Inter-American Dialogue in Washington.